Welcome to LOA Today. I'm Walt Thiessen, here with life coach Linda Armstrong. Today is Friday. Happy Friday, May 24th, 2019. It's 4 p.m. here in the New York area, 1 p.m. in Los Angeles. It is 9 p.m. in London, and it's 6 a.m. at Sydney in Sydney, Australia, but wherever you are in the world, thank you for joining us for another episode of LOA Today. Your daily dose of happy, and Linda was dancing to the music there. She's all excited, I know. Because we always get to have a good time on Friday, and people are starting to filter in, watching us on the live stream. So it must mean that we're doing another program. And, and I have an interesting thing I've been experiencing this week, Linda. I want to tell you about. It's not anything earth shattering or anything like that. It's just kind of an interesting thing. Um, as you know, uh, Alex King and I have been working on producing a new audio play called "The Grass Is Greener." Uh, we've been through a number of different uh, versions of the script. We have a final script. We're now in casting. We've got a whole bunch of people. We've had over 330 people who have uh, applied to audition. So we've been working through that huge list. And the the thing that I noticed is, I mean, right now it's been all about just sorting that out. Oh, okay, who are our people that we eliminate immediately? Who do we want to look at more closely? All that kind of thing. And that's a really dull, mundane process, especially in the early stages, because a lot of the times it's just, well, did they send a sample audio or a sample video? You know, if they didn't, okay, we eliminate them, you know, stuff like that. And it's very repetitive. It's dull. It's what's often called go for work. And at first it was a little bit difficult, but, and this is the big but, I'm so excited and Alex is so excited by the way this project is going that it got to the point where I was enjoying the go for work. And I thought that was just so cool because, <laughs> I mean, I've done that kind of stuff before. I mean, it's not like no, no, lots of people have done that, but I never really said, oh, well, this is fun. It was fun. I was enjoying it because I'm enjoying the project so much. So I just thought I'd share that. Well, that's great because we really need to get to the place where we hold that energy all the time. Yes. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So you just had an experience with something that you normally would not hold that energy towards. Right. And you did. So yeah, yeah, it's fun. This is like this is cool stuff. I like this. <laughs> and let's see. I know that uh, uh, people are starting to comment. Hi, Jeffrey. Jeffrey's commenting there. Um, I also received a message through Facebook from one of our loyal listeners, the administrator of the Law of Attraction Change My Life group, Jamie. She's going to be joining us. I think she has uh, something she wants to bring up in the comments section because she was, she was asking me where do you find that. So I'm kind of looking to see. Okay, when's Jamie going to be here? But uh, that's okay. Um, anybody who has questions or comments or topics you want us to address who's listening to the live stream, feel free to type something into the comment section because we'll be glad to take that on. It makes things much more fun. But in the meantime, we'll just, you know, we'll just talk about life and being deliberate creators and being energy conduits and, and tapping into that energy flow. And, and you got nobody better here to ask than, that, than Linda. I mean, she's like, the resident expert on energy flow. So take advantage of that. So how, how's your week been? What you been up to? Uh, my week's been good. I actually, maybe what we want to talk about, I mean, it's what I always talk about, but uh, <laughs> the video I just released on my YouTube channel was, um, what is your superpower? Ooh, I like that question. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and then I go to talk about what the superpower that we all have, every single mm -hmm. one of us. And mm -hmm. that is this this power of living through the energy of love because when we're in that high vibration manifesting is easy yes everything you're you're in the flow you know you have that open line of communication you, you're allowing your maybe you don't know you are but uh, you're allowing that guidance to come through and to you know move you forward mm -hmm. where everything's just in the flow so that's why it was kind of fun that you said that you were enjoying something that you normally would not yeah. So you actually caught the wave, you know? Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, and the thing is, we have this power of choice to decide whether we want to be in love or be in fear. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. It's true. Because when you're in that energy of fear, doubt, worry, all those things, especially with our crowd, Law of Attraction crowd, um, it's so easy to go there because when, when oh, you God. put like a timetable on your manifestation, <laughs> when mm -hmm. you see it, it didn't didn't arrive yet. You immediately go into this fear, doubt, and worry. Right. It's not going to happen. I can't have it. How is it going to happen? You know, you get so limited by your mind and all those programs that are in the subconscious that you're not allowing that stream to just mm. flow. That that takes you there. It is 
literally right there. Mm -hmm. And having said all that, yeah, it sounds easy. <laughs> it actually is easy, but for it some is. reason, in our human form, we have a hard time with it. And that's what was so cool today. I mean, for instance, one of the things that I was experiencing was just the joy of doing, you know, the little tasks and, and counting down. Oh, I have a uh, hundred left to, to uh, process. Oh, I've got 80 more to process. Oh, I'm down to 60. Oh, I'm down to 40. And, you know, that's the kind of thing that like a, a motivational speaker will tell you, well, you know, give yourself little goals to reach. And as you reach the little goals, it'll be easier and easier and easier. But for me, it was exactly the way around, the other way around. I was focusing on this is really, really easy. And then the goals started getting there. <laughs> well, and so you bring up another point, another message that I get all the time from my guides is, you know, there's no right way. Or should I say there's mm -hmm. no one right way or, mm -hmm. you know to find your own way. And when we have all these, we give our power away to all these other people, say some mm. guru or some body saying, this is the way you do it. Mm. But you try to do it their way and it, their way doesn't work for you. And so then you get more deeper in that rut of thinking that you can't make it happen. When if you would just like, you know, be the energy that you are, this energy of love and just breathe and allow yourself to be in that place where you were such in a great energy while you were doing something you thought was a mundane task mm -hmm. when you allow yourself to bring yourself back into that energy and then feel around i mean nobody knows better than you what is right for you right so you want to um allow yourself or even play with the possibility that you could connect to your higher self to give you the guidance as to the right way for you to do it mm. right so you pretty much did that today, and that's cool. But let's also show a little gratitude for how many people applied. Yeah. Oh, I am I am psyched. That's I mean, a lot of people. You it's mean, a ton you know, of people. Like, yeah. 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 I, I mean, we started off with um, posting on, like, Facebook and, you know, tweeting and all that kind of thing, and we started getting some responses that way. And then um, I was just digging around looking for places to share our, our ad with. And found backstage.com and realized that was the website of Backstage Magazine, which is like the magazine of the theater and movie industry. And ran it by my sister. My sister is going to be directing the play and she also has a theater background, a theater degree and so forth. And she said, Oh yeah, that's definitely the, the right place to advertise because when they, when you come out of acting school, they tell you that's the first place to go to when you're trying to get work. And I said, okay, well, let's give it a shot. Went there. I actually got a 50% discount, which was even nicer. Place the ad, and I tell you, my inbox just started to fill up. It was crazy to watch. <laughs> it was really crazy to watch. I mean, I would, I, I placed the ad. The next morning, I woke up. I was expecting to see, you know, four, five, six, seven replies. I had eighty-six replies the first night. I woke up. I started processing them. I processed them for a few hours, and after I processed a bunch, a bunch of them, I still had a hundred and ten left. So it actually was outpacing my ability to process. <laughs> it was really cool. It was very cool to have that many people. Now, I know this is actually typical for, for the theatrical industry. There are far more people who want to be actors than there are roles available. And so there's going to be quite a few people who want to express interest. But it, it was more than just you know, a bunch of people who were applying. I was getting messages from people saying, you know, they'd actually read the description of what we're doing. Oh, I'm so excited about that. I'm, I've been into the law of attraction for years, you know, stuff like that. Getting excited about something. And they, they hadn't even seen the script yet. <laughs> so so I, I think I, I was thinking this was going to be more of a, a podcast kind of thing. But is it going to be people coming together in the, like a play? In yeah. Yeah. It, it, think of it as, as an old time radio show where you had a, a cast of characters that would, it was like the precursor to television. It was television without the, the uh, video screen. And that's kind of what we're doing today. We're, we're going to be kind of doing that throwback thing and uh, just doing it as an audio play. So it's, it's a one sense only. It's only through your sense of hearing. You don't get to see anything, um, which is a challenge. That, that It's a fun challenge, but it's a challenge because we're so used to thinking about and experiencing uh, entertainment of that kind through the visual, right? Now we're doing it through auditory, and of course that's right in my wheelhouse because that's my strongest sense anyway. But nevertheless, it's, it's a challenge because now you can't you can't have an actor who acts out something going on. You have to show it through sounds going on, like in the background sounds or people making comments or, or you know, things like that. Okay, so it's a so different then, way of presenting. So it so it's not going to be live. Then you're going to be editing 
Correct. Right. Okay. Yeah. We don't have the, the facilities to be able to do it as a live program and pull it off every time. No, but I meant even live, like through Zoom, even if you never show the video, but that the, it's all recorded in real time, um, no editing, or, you know, that would well, be like doing the play, right? In, in well, well we, we actually are going to use the Zoom platform when we record it, but it's going to be for the purpose of recording it, taking that, running it through some editing and, you know, okay. making everything just right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of like a cross between doing a live show and making a movie scene by scene. All right. Sounds fun. Yeah. It is, yeah, it is fun. And I have to also say, too, it's a lot more fun once I got my sister on board because she's directed a lot of plays, and it's so much easier when you have a professional director who knows what she's doing, taking that. I mean, that, I know Alex would not have been afraid of that, but that part was a little bit intimidating for me. Like, could Alex and I really direct this thing? Yeah. So when she came on, I said, oh, boy, this is great. I mean, it's just one more indication that the whole thing is coming together. It feels really good. Cool. Yeah. So... Yeah, that, that's what's happening. Oh, and I, sh I should be making some announcements here. I'm trying to get announcements in early on the show. So okay. um, one of them is, you know, we still are, we haven't made out our cast yet. If you have thought about, you know, maybe trying to apply to be a cast member, we'd love to have you do it. And all you have to do is uh, just make like a little 20-second selfie video with your smartphone and send that uh, video by email to me, and I will make sure that it gets processed and you'll be included with everybody else. And, you know, if you if it's, if you have the right voice, it's not like you have to have acting talent. You just have to have the right sound for the characters that we're, we're putting together. And, um, I mean, you may come up against a professional actor, and the professional actor has all the chops and you don't, but you have the right voice and she doesn't, or you have the right voice and he doesn't. And that's cool. That's fine. That's one of the fun things here because it's only just voice that really counts. So, and, you, know. you know. What else is fun? What's because that? You did say that the – um um YouTube is behind a little bit, right? A little bit, yes. Mm -hmm. so as you started telling that people can still uh, audition, look at Jeffrey's comment. Did you get all your actors still taking Ah, auditions? there you go. Yes, we are still <laughs> taking auditions. We actually haven't started the audition process. What we're in right now is the application process, and that's what we've been processing for the last three or four days. But uh, PJ and Alex and I, PJ's my sister, the three of us are going to be meeting on Saturday with people we have so far and are, meet, are meeting about the people we have so far and kind of winnowing down the list of it. But there's still time to get an application in. So, yeah, just just make a little 20-second video and email it to me. Uh, my email address is walt at loatoday.net, or you can send it to casting at loatoday.net. Either one, they both come to me. And uh, I'll be glad to include you in the process. Um, also, I want to make sure I um, mention a couple of things. I'm going to get all the promos out of the way. So, are you subscribing to the podcast? I hope you are. But if you're not, make sure that you subscribe. We, we're putting the links in as many places as we, as we possibly can, so it's easy for you to find. But if you can't find the links, just go to the homepage of our website, LOAToday.net. And right there at the top of the page, you'll see instructions for your particular device for becoming a subscriber. And then, of course, once you subscribe, all of the episodes will come your way, including information about when the grass is greener is going to be released. And on top of that, it also gives you the opportunity to share with others. That's the whole idea, subscribe and share. So there they are, our messages for the day. Okay, so while you were doing all that talking, um, I think it was before the announcements when you were mm -hmm. actually talking about the play. This is the card that came up. The world. Nine, the world. So whether it's referring to your play or to, I think it's for everybody, right? Probably, yeah. Perfect, you know, take it however it, sh however it resonates with you. I um, think it resonated with Jeffrey because he says, good, I think I'm going to submit just for the fun and support. Great. I love it. Do it, Jeffrey. <laughs> so this card is talking about, um, so it says the man in the picture. So if you can see this man in the picture. Yep, he's kind of kneeling down. No, he's standing there. I'm not sure what he's saying. It says he's looking out over a bay. Okay. Above which is a beautiful sphere of the earth rotating. Yeah. This card is reminding you to expand your vision and um, and contemplate some much broader options. The world is wide and there's lots out there to consider. Mm. In the modern age of technology, this could specifically be referring to creating or expanding to a more global network through the Internet or social marketing. Um, drawing this card also lets you know that you have unlimited resources available to you, and now is the time to think big. As they say, the world is your oyster, so get ready to gobble it up. So that's kind of fun because here you are talking about this. You're expanding into something totally new, yep. and you have this outreach, and all these people are – like 
wanting to hop on board, mm -hmm. um, that's pretty cool. It is cool. Yeah. I'm loving it. And, and I think that card does apply to a lot of people, but I think it also does apply to the audio play. I yeah. think it's definitely attracting, you know, tying into what's going on there because I, I'm really feeling this thing has an excellent chance of taking off. I just feel that deep, deep down. And that's a nice feeling. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So then Very that cool. would be um, shared with the, the podcast, but not through like, uh, how is that going to be distributed once it's all going? Well, it, it's going to have its own uh, podcast feed, uh, but we'll, Obviously, you'll be sharing lots of stuff about it um, through this podcast. So there will be a, a separate subscription. And we're also going to tie it in with a uh, patronage system So because uh, eventually we'll be selling advertising. So the offer is going to be if you want to avoid the advertising, give us a buck an episode, and we'll give you the episodes without advertising in there, which is you know kind of right. a fair thing. And uh, so we'll have links for that as well. And uh, But but the, uh, the advertising versions are going to be on YouTube. They're going to be on Facebook. They're going to be on... Um, our website, they're going to be on a special website for the grass is greener. So they're going to be all over the place. Well, you know, now that you mentioned that, and I don't know what the requirements are, but on YouTube, especially when you do these live broadcasts, mm -hmm. if you had a Patreon account, LinkedIn, I think it's Patreon, people can donate. That's true. Yeah. I mean, you're here every day mm -hmm. sharing and uplifting people. And I bet you a lot of people would like to contribute to you doing, continuing to do that. You know? that, that, that's actually on my list of to-dos. I mean, if, if it weren't for the fact that I had this big audio play that I was working on, I would have had it done this week. But the audio play kind of took precedence. Okay. But I'm definitely going to get to that. In fact, I'm thinking of in, in perhaps a way tying it together to get more people to contribute. In other words, they'll be able to uh, be patrons of the audio play, and they'll also get some special feeds to back episodes of LOA Today. So, you know, tie the whole thing together that way. Right. Yeah. yeah. Because, and I don't know if, you know, through YouTube, if you have, not that we need to talk about this now, but if you need to have any certain amount of subscribers to be able to have that capability, I'm not sure. But you've got tons and tons of podcast listeners. Um, maybe they can come over and, you know, like the, subscribe to the LOA Today yeah. podcast videos. Yeah. And, and you're right. I should actually mention that too. I, I thought I finished the announcements, but I should mention that. And we are getting more and more people subscribing on YouTube, which is great. But uh, by all means, if you're listening to the live stream, the, you can see the subscribe button right there on your screen or just listen to any of the uh, recorded versions. Um, and, and there's a su subscribe button right there as well. Um, you can find us on YouTube a number of different ways. Probably the easiest way is just go to YouTube and search on LOA Today podcast videos and, and we'll just pop right up when you do that. Um, and then once you subscribe, this is the really cool part. This is something Alex told me about that I didn't know. Hit the bell. Hit the bell. Hit hit the bell. bell. Absolutely. Hit the bell. And, and the bell, for those who are wondering, the bell only shows up if you're using a smartphone. For whatever reason, they, Google decided not to put it on desktops and laptops. No, but, the bell is on, the bell is there. The, if you're, if you're watching on your, on your computer, you can hit the bell. I, I, I don't, I, I don't get a bell on mine. I, I've tried it. it Maybe because it's your own channel. I, I, I hit the bell for you. I get notifications every time you're on. You do? Yeah. Well, then I take back what I said about you have to be on a smartphone. That, that <laughs> bell is everywhere. Okay. Maybe, that's maybe. funny because I logged in with a different account and I didn't see the bell, so I don't know what that's about. It should be but, right there next to the, the – um, here, let me move this. Let, let's put it this way. The bell is almost always there, at least almost always there. <laughs> maybe it doesn't show when, when, when it's live, but I bet you if you look at any of the replays, you're going to see that there. Okay. Well, hey, that's good news no matter how you look at it. So the point is hit the bell. Hit the bell. That way you get notified every single time that we are live streaming or that we published a, a podcast. Yeah, because I, I hit it and I didn't do it from my phone. <laughs> cool. I love it. Well, you just made my day even more, so thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so let's see. We don't have any extra comments. Jeffrey's the only one who's been commenting so far. But uh, So I'm going to pick another card. We'll see I, if it's something for us to talk about. Yeah, I see you dipping New into a different beginnings. card. Ah! Ah! Oh. Yeah, I mean, this, uh, is, this is the energy that's been going on. Just about every one of my energy updates is about this whole thing with the energy shifting and people stepping into whole new beginnings. You've been talking about that for a few weeks now. I think you started like at the end of March talking about how this is a whole yeah. era where yeah. we're just going into this big, big change time. Yeah, we're just dumping old programs and um, – it really being downloaded with new ones, whether you're aware of it or not, mm -hmm. and, uh, just stepping into new ways of being. And I mean, a lot of the people coming to me now want to move 
into something else. They may have been doing some of their career their whole life, but it doesn't feed them anymore. Because as your vibration is rising and you become more of who your truth, which is an energy being that is made of love and that is connected to everything and all things, mm -hmm. you start to shift towards more in that direction. So maybe the thing you were doing that used to light you up at some point no longer is. Mm. And that's, I'm finding that for a lot of people. That's cool though. That That's a good thing. Now, do you think that is simply because of the, I mean, you've mentioned before, there's this like overall increase in, in enlightenment, so to speak, more and more people becoming aware, remembering all that kind of thing. Um, do you think that's, that's simply attributable to that or is there more involved? Are, are people simply deciding, I'm just going to start living more. I'm going to start doing more. I'm going to start being more. I'm going to start enjoying more. Is this, is this just like independent of people becoming self-aware? Uh, I believe that it is because the energy is shifting and everybody's energy is rising. So when your energy is raising, you're coming more into that energy of love, even if you're not, can't hold it all the time, but you're starting to realize that you matter and that it's okay to do for yourself. I mean, it used to be, we would sacrifice ourselves for everybody and everything else. No kidding. Right? Because, because you're told it's selfish to do whatever, whatever for yourself. You know I mean? Right. That's, that's a group thing that's in the collective mind. And um, that's kind of changing. So people are realizing, wow, you know, I mean, I deserve to be happy and I deserve to do what lights me up. Absolutely. So, yeah. So I think that um, even even if you have no clue that this that there's this whole energy shifting going on, it's still happening. Mm -hmm. So people who aren't in this world of love, you, you'll you know, you talk to regular people, <laughs> people who are not of this world, right. And you, you'll you hear them talking about the same thing. Like, you know, I, I just, I don't like what I'm doing anymore. I want to do something else. Or I'm not happy where I'm living. I would rather live in this other state or other place. Like, a lot of changing is going on for everybody. You, you just touched on a really important point there, too. Um, you kind of did indirectly, so I'm going to go a little bit more direct on it. But you mentioned how people are dissatisfied with what's going on in their lives right now. They want a change to take place. And that dissatisfaction is key because that's what starts the whole process. When you start with that, okay, this is what I'm, I, I don't want this anymore. This thing that's going on, I don't want this. I want something else. That just starts the whole process of attracting what it is that you do want. And, and when you're tied into an energy stream that, like you say, is increasing, all of a sudden stuff starts to happen. Even, even if you don't know how the stuff works, it just starts to happen. Yeah. Cause you start, you start to realize more of yourself and, and as even if you're not totally aware of that, but you, you are in some way c coming into you and deciding that you want to feel better. You want to be happier. You want to do what really lights you up. You want to, now it's my time, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's time for me. Exactly. Uh, okay. So I'm going to read the card. Okay. Says, uh, each and every journey begins with the all important first step. When this card presents itself in your reading, it's confirming that it's time for you to take a brave leap of faith. Mm -hmm. but be prepared as you do so. This card represents that a great new adventure is waiting you. Um, it usually shows up when there's a significant inner change happening, which is what we've just been talking about, right? You might not even be aware of what that is, but it's happening. Um, so there's an inner change happening within you. By selecting this card, it's a sign that those important choices are needed and are about to be made and should be carefully pondered as you proceed with wisdom, thought, and self-care. Life is con constantly trying to nudge you and move you forwards. If you will let it, that's the whole thing. When you, when you open up to allowing your guidance to flow through you and to guide you to where you want to go, everything's great. Mm. But it's when we get stuck in that mind that is so limited, um, we, can't, we can't see how things could be different, so we think can't mm. be different. I'm stuck like this. This is the way it's got to be. Yep. When it's not true, that's just a lie. Yep. Okay, so it says, okay, life is continually trying to nudge and move you forward. At times, it can be daunting when you're faced with a new adventure or direction. Therefore, it calls for inner belief and courage as you take that leap of faith and step into the unknown. During this time, don't be alarmed if you feel lost or even confused. And that you do kind of feel lost and confused. Right? No kidding. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Especially if you don't understand what's happening. All you know is you're not happy or dissatisfied with what you got right now. That's going to feel very confusing. Right. Yeah. 
And the thing is, you want to be able to allow yourself to be there without judgment, without judging yourself, you know, and mm-hmm. making yourself feel wrong for no longer being drawn to what you had. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That could be in any area of your life. Absolutely. Okay. So most people are afraid of change and play it safe by staying where they are. Um, know that through inner guidance, wisdom, and belief in yourself, and by tapping into these tools, you'll be propelled forward in a positive life-changing path. Don't conform to what society or other individuals expect of you at this time. That's mm-hmm. the thing. You're like, I can't do that because I'll be letting this one down or I'll be letting that one down or um, people think that I'm this way. How can I let them know I'm actually that way, <laughs> right? I played that role for so many years. I know it intimately. <laughs> okay. So it says, it's it's your own adventure. During this time, be like an innocent child with fresh eyes and give yourself permission to live, play, love, and above all, laugh. Mm. Nice part. Yeah. yeah. Interesting combination, too. First the world and then new beginnings. Put those yeah. two, two concepts together. That's an interesting combination. Yeah. I mean, there are a lot of ways you can read that, but one way that I it, it just instantly resonates with me is, a new beginning for the world. Yeah. And that, that's, and that's an exciting concept. And that's what this whole energy shift is all about. It's like yeah. the new earth, you know, Google the new earth and start learning about it. You know, mm-hmm. things aren't, things aren't changing and shifting. Yeah. That, that's a great combination. It also occurs to me that, I mean, when I tie it into the, um, the, the, the audio play and how I'm feeling about it and how Al- I know Alex is getting really excited about it. My sister's excited. Um, when I look at what do I hope for, for the play? Cause I, I can't say I had any real specific hopes in mind. I had like, well, I, pe- I hope people like it. I hope people want to listen to it. You know, I hope it grows, but it's gotten to the point now where I'm starting to, to feel an expectation of really big acceptance. And I don't even know how that would look. I can't begin to describe how that would look or how that would be or how it would feel other than to say from where I'm sitting right now, it's like, the whole world is kind of catching on to this audio play that none of them know about yet. And, right. and that, it, it's such a strange thing to, to be. So, to so keep, keep really milking that energy, you know, mm. and uh, keep feeding it that excitement because that's what, that's what it will be. Mm. Yeah. It's just, I mean, I know that I know, I know that's how it works. My mind is telling me, yes, that's how it works, but the feeling is different. I've, I've never experienced it this way before. Yeah. So that's I, cool. I like because that means your team is behind you saying, yeah, this yeah. is it. Keep going. They're flowing you that energy so that you stay with it. So that that energy is stronger than any of those fearful, doubtful thoughts that will come in. And that's just it. I, and I'm feeling it. I'm feeling that energy. And I think that's what's different here. I'm feeling the energy in a way I've never really felt before. So I, and you could say I'm more open to it. I'm in better receiving mode, however you want to express it. I'm feeling it more. And that's exciting. It's fun to feel that. Well, and it, and it all works together. There's nothing, there's really nothing by chance. It's hmm. all part of a plan. Okay. Talk about that for a moment. Well, we're not conscious of the plan, but we set the plan up before we get here. <laughs> okay. And so when you have things kind of just fall into sync like that, you know, it's like um, how I started doing this podcast was kind of out of the blue, right? Yeah. But it just, mm-hmm. but it just happened. Um, people seem to like it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? We start talking about energy stuff and you, you had these questions about energy that you probably can't even remember what the questions were anymore because now you're so <laughs> in the flow of the energy. It's like an old you. It's like a part of you that, that was shed, you know, like, what is it? What are they? Like, geckos, you know, they shed the skin and then they have mm-hmm. a, a new one. Right. Um, so there's a lot of that going on. Right. Mm-hmm. And so, and out of that, you know, there's probably a million other factors to it. It all contributes to where you're going and to keep you on course to that. So, you know, there might, this plan, you're like, you, you like you could, you say you could feel it, but you don't really know how it all happens, mm-hmm. but you know, it exists, which yes. to me, it really feels like this plan existed before you were even born. And now That's it's really. just playing itself out. That, that would actually make some sense. Yeah. And, and I actually do remember th- many of the questions I asked you, you know, when you were first coming on the podcast last summer. Uh, but to me, that's actually fun. 
to remember that. I like, I enjoy, you know, remembering where I was at then and where, knowing where I am now and remembering where I was at, you know, six and a half years ago when I started the podcast. I, I, I enjoy, you know, seeing that, that connected worm, so to speak, of me right. in my life throughout that period and, and how I felt at each one of those stages. And, and looking back, it's like, wow, it's been quite a growth path. <laughs> All right, so let's get another let's get another card. This time it's from the Enchanted Map. The Enchanted Map? Okay. Yeah, but we we have metamorphosis but upside down. Uh-huh. Okay. This is what it looks like right side up. Am I on the There we go. Yep, right you got it. Up, metamorphosis. Yeah. Okay. And, and metamorphosis, well let talk for a moment about is there is something specific that is meant by upside down? I mean, I know you get a, you have a different reading for upside down versus right side up, but in general, does upside down kind of signify something? I would say no, because I know, like especially with the energy deck, the one that we got the the world card from, is that what that was? Yeah. Um, people in my groups when I would hold live live groups, um, they would be afraid of getting the upside down card. Because sometimes, a lot of times, that upside down card was such a great message. So there's mm-hmm. no negative to it being upside down. It's just that the energy is one way or the other way. I, I get the impression that right side up versus upside down is really about two different ways of looking at the same thing. It is. It's two different aspects of the of the same thing. But it doesn't mean one's positive, one's negative. Right. Right. Yeah. It's just two different ways of looking at it. Because people, I mean, these girls that were in, in that group, they named this deck because it was the first one I had that had upside down cards that I was sharing with people. Uh-huh. They called it the spooky deck because of the <laughs> upside down cards. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But they had to pick from the spooky deck every single time they came. They loved it, but they still thought of it as spooky because it would give these reverse messages. Well, apparently it didn't spook them so much that it kept them away. So that's a good no, thing. No, no, no. Yeah, no, they wanted that deck above any other deck. It, it attracted them in, yeah. <laughs> That's fun. Okay, so this was in the reverse, and okay. so it says, there are times of chaos and darkness that occur, much like the growing pains experienced by the caterpillar, who's in the process of becoming a butterfly. Ooh, mm-hmm. shifting from one thing to another. Yeah. Um, there's a tendency to expect the worst when first signs of difficulty arise, When something is taken away or unwanted circumstances come to challenge you to let go of old ideas about how life is supposed to be, you are not a victim. Rather, you're experiencing the temporary discomfort we all must go through before the beauty is revealed. Mm. Now, doesn't that tie into every single thing we said so far with people evolving and changing and moving out of one way to another and and all this mind traps that come in that maybe make them feel like it's not okay or maybe it's so scary. But you know what? You can't stop it because it wants to happen, right? It's so true. this is about, you know, just being able to, um, you know, it's just temporary discomfort. You'll get there. Mm-hmm. Just keep mm-hmm. following your guidance and where it's taken you. So that's perfect. That is perfect. I love how these cards always always just work. I'm I'm really impressed, actually, because when you first started bringing cards into the podcast, there was a little part of my mind that said, okay, well, this is pretty woo-woo, but we'll go with it for a while to see what happens. And now I, it gets to the point that you draw a card, and I say to myself, well, that certainly makes sense. And then you pull the next card, well, that certainly makes sense. And it's just every single time it's like, well, that certainly makes sense. Yeah. And it's not like I'm looking through these looking for the right card. I have no clue. What, and you see me. I'm shuffling. Oh, yeah. And I pick a card. Um, they just come out the way they're supposed to come out. <laughs> the way it works. Which is great. That's the way it should be. They come out and they seem to make no sense. Well, that's pretty cool because that challenges you to have to really look within and see, well, where is this message that's coming through with this card, you know? Right, right. Because usually you'll see it. it it'll, it'll reveal itself in some way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, that means that whenever we're um, – you don't have to be doing cards, right? This is going to be true for almost anything that you're looking at your life with, whatever lens you're looking at your life at. But no matter what that lens is, it's really up to us to decide how am I going to receive and preferably accept that information that's coming to me, right? I mean, we, sometimes we talk about it in terms of getting it from inner being, which confused me for the longest time because it felt to me like I was getting nothing from inside. I finally got to the point where I started feeling stuff. 
um, which was great, you know, but it, it could be from just people like to look at signs. They see signs, so they, they, they draw information from signs. It can be just from conversations. You know, uh, we don't talk about this too much, but it's amazing how often the same conversation pops up over and over again with different people, different circumstances, different places, but it's the same conversation. Yeah. And some of it's like, you know, you can easily explain it. Like, you know, it could be something political. So everybody's talking about the political thing, you know, that that's common enough, but then you get conversations where, you know, like you and I right now are, have been talking about what's been going on with the play, the audio play. It wouldn't surprise me at all if, after we got off the show today and Louise and I go off and we take care of uh, the last bit of business that we have to take care of. And then we have dinner and then we get a phone call tonight and it's something about plays or audio plays or movies or something along that line. It wouldn't surprise me at all because that kind of thing happens a lot. The only difference is most often those of us who are not into all this stuff don't notice it, but it still happens a lot. Oh my God. It's been happening to me all week. I was just trying to look through my phone to see if I could find one. I'd probably have to open my email. But I've been having these things where um, either I was going to do something and I didn't. And then the next day, the thing I was going to do with whatever came to me. Oh, nice. You know, and, and it, it's been happening a lot this week. I'm like, oh, my God, this is so in the field. <laughs> because I, this was on my mind yesterday and I, was, I just didn't get around to giving you a call or whatever it was. Right. right. Um, so much of that in this past week has been going on. Yeah. That's great. Well, That's... You know, information's out there. So as you become more sensitive, you do tap into things. Mm -hmm. And what's cool is that if you're if you open your awareness, you'll see when it shows up. You're like, oh wow, that I was totally thinking that yesterday or the day before, or I was you know, whatever it is, you'll see the synchronicity in how two separate you would think are totally separate things actually we're coming together. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And that's yeah. what I like about group coaching because like, um, you know, I have another group coaching thing coming up and it, and it, the people who come together in a group, random people come together. There's always a common thread. You know, mm. each one is kind of experiencing similar stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just, they just come together. They're just strangers until they meet in the group, you know? Um, I think we all have that experience too. I mean, it doesn't matter what kind of group you're talking about. It could be coaching, but it could be just uh, people who get together for bridge or they you know, get together to go out together or whatever. But, uh, like I'm, I'm remembering the last time that Anne Marie and Mike, who used to do the Sunday podcast with me before I stopped doing the Sunday podcast, they live near us. They're about uh, 20 miles away from us. And the four of us will often go out and get dinner together or something like that. And invariably, the topics of, of what's going on in our lives will have, like you said, they'll have this common thread where we're all dealing with basically the same thing and we'll marvel at it. Like, that's really crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But th there you go. That's like attracting like, right? Yeah, I mean, exactly. In the field, you're picking up on the energy that's in the field. Mm. Yeah. You know, or you think of somebody and then an hour later they call you, you know, cause you picked up on the energy. It was, it was already, you're already aware that this was coming in. Mm -hmm. yeah, you, you you didn't have the conscious awareness to know it, but your energy was tapping into it. It's fun for me because um, the first time I really experienced it regularly was when I met Louise. Because Louise and I, and this is often true for spouses, they, we were just totally on the same wavelength to the point where we could practically finish each other's sentences like twins can do, you know, and, and which was spooky. I mean, I wasn't used to that. I don't think she was either. And, and all of a sudden, you know, we'd be talking about something and we both would have the same association at the same moment. We'd say, whoa, that's really crazy. How is that happening? But it happens so often that now we're just used to it. And I thought it was just going to be because that was just because of the way we were, because you know, we're very much on the same wavelength with so many things. Well, since then, it has expanded. And now I'm getting it not just with Louise. I'm getting it in a wide range of areas. I'm getting it here on the podcast. I've got with all my, my co-hosts. Amazing how often, you know, I bring up a topic and like you just said today, oh, I was just talking about that on my uh, YouTube podcast that I was doing earlier today. You know, and, and everybody will, will give me the same kind of feedback. Something along the line of, oh, yeah, this thing was going on in my life. Just the same kind of thing. Like, right. So like I said, once you crack that egg open, you can't put it back. I don't think I'd really want to, but you're right. No, I, I, I mean, not. <laughs> but the thing is you can't because it's like the light's coming in and then more can come in, more can come in. You're just expanding your awareness. That's what it's all about. Mm. It's all about expanding your awareness yeah. and stepping into your truth. It's nice to know that it's fun though. 
I mean, it makes it yeah. so much better that it's fun. I mean, sometimes it's not fun, but no. if if you're if you understand that there's a purpose for it, then you can get through it much easier. You know, like you know, people go through a, a dark night of the soul, right? It's like you think ugh, you think everything. That's it. It's it, you think your world is over. Mm. So you come out of it on the other side in a brand new place, and you're so mm. grateful for that awful experience because it brought you to this new thing. Mm-hmm. It's just that when you're in the middle of it, <laughs> yeah. It can be hell up in the middle of it. It's hard to look. It's hard to look at. It, but the more the more your your consciousness and, and you awaken, you're like, okay, there's a reason for this. I don't know what it is, but I'm just gonna trust. And the more you get into that place of trusting and allowing, and um, pretty much just surrendering to it, it can pass through fast. Yeah, exactly. Because it's not like bad things don't happen. Bad things still happen at times, but. I, I think what what I'm finding is as I get, I don't know how to say it, more in vibrational tune with what's going on, maybe that's the best way to say it, as I experience more the, the feel-good side of this connection, this energy thing that goes on, when something does happen, it just doesn't affect me as much anymore. I, I mean, I, I don't feel like that I have this big investment like I used to, and, oh, God, this is so terrible. I can't believe this horrible thing happened. It just doesn't affect me that way. I was stunned when my father died. When my father died, now my, my father's been gone 11 years now. But when he died, um, up until the point that he died, he, he suffered from um, symptoms related to Parkinson's disease, which is a pretty nasty thing to go through. And you know, the last few months of his life were not really nice to deal with at all. But I found that on the day he died, I had done all my mourning. And I actually felt good. And I thought, this isn't the way it's supposed to feel. You're supposed to be in pain. You're supposed to be in suffering. And I wasn't. And I thought, what, well, what's going on here? That's really interesting. Because you, you knew that he was free now. I did. Yeah. 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 I had a lot of belief in that. Well, plus also we got some confirmation through my sister. My sister received a message from my dad a couple of days later that just kind of reinforced it for all of us. But it, that was a, that was an interesting thing. And, and ever since then, I mean, there have been plenty of things that have gone wrong lately, lately. And by lately, I mean over the last 10 years, there's been a lot that's gone wrong, but it becomes less and less impactful. Yeah. I don't know why that is, but it does. You know, a tip I can give people that would help them is because I, I had a client yesterday and see, isn't it funny how these things all come together here? We're talking about something where this applies. Mm-hmm. Um, and, he has this anxiety that comes in regarding a certain situation and he's been like pushing it away, like as if he's like, like forcing it away. And and so I forget how he described it. And I said, well, the next time this happens, I want you to go into it, love it, Mm. thank it for what it is trying to do for you or for the lessons that it's bringing you. Mm -hmm. And he was like, what? No way. You know, like, uh, uh, uh. I'm like, no, really? I mean, that's how I healed my rotator cuff tear. I, I just sent the energy of love. Love heals everything. And so I understand like, his viewpoint because it, because when you get that message the first time, when you, you probably said that to him for the first time. You probably never heard that before. It sounds crazy. Let's be perfectly honest. That just sounds crazy. So of course, I mean, I remember reacting that way. I said, oh, yeah, sure. You're going to see me doing that right. <laughs> But it's not it's not crazy because that's how you heal. Instead of pulling away from something, it's like, um, you know, you know that feeling that, like, okay, you, you, your stomach is killing you. You got this pain. Like you want to pull away from it, right? You stub your yeah. foot, you cut yourself. You sure. feel, you can actually, if you, like I feel like I can feel that you want to pull away from it or that's how I would have used to have been or I can just sense it in other people. I'm not really sure where it comes from, mm-hmm. but it's this pulling away from it. When if you just go into it, number one, if it was something like a painful thing, the pain actually subsides by being, it's mindfulness. It's like Which going into it, yeah. looking at it, being with it, and then when you can accept it and love it, well, then it can start to heal. Yeah, for me, it's almost like if I, if I focus on, like, like I was dealing with this last year with um, ligament injury in my knees. Um I was focusing on uh, one of the ligaments that was in, you know, really throbbing pain. And this is part of where I was trying to, I, I've told this story before, I was trying to imagine my knees feeling whole and feeling healthy and so forth. And, I, and so I did exactly what you just described. I, I went to it with the mind that this is going to be fine. It's actually going to feel good. 
And like you said, the, the pain actually did stop and it stopped quickly. That was what was so interesting about it. It stopped really fast. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then I was just writing down some notes. So, so like even with the ego, right? When it's giving you all these messages and you start getting sucked into it and you're giving your attention to all the negative, right? Mm-hmm. You, can't, you know, fear and love can't be together, right? So now you're swimming in the juice of that. Mm-hmm. Um, even if you think you're fighting that message and you're like, no, we can do it this way, that you're still in, 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 into the engaged in the fight in the lower energy of it when all you need to do is move into your heart and allow for miracles mm-hmm. <laughs> that, you know, you know, the wonder of a child, they, they just know everything happens for them, right? That the whole mm-hmm. world evolves around them in the, in the early ages. Right. But moving into the energy of love is always going to take you out of those lower energies because love energy and all of that lower energy, they don't exist on the same frequency. Mm-hmm. So they can't, they can't be together. So, but we have this ability, this choice, to move into a different way of looking at it. And, you know, a lot of times, you know, people don't want to try that because it's unfamiliar. You're used to doing the normal stuff, the fighting with it or, you know, whatever that is. Um, You're not used to loving it. Like you said, people might think that's crazy. But let me tell you, try it. Always go for that higher energy. Always reaching for a higher vibrational frequency which, of course, getting back to Abraham puts you in the flow. You're no longer going upstream. You're going, you're just flowing. Mm-hmm. Yep, you're just going downstream. And it does take time, I think, to really learn to trust that because that's really what it is. It's, uh, I, I mean, the first time that was proposed to me, my mind instantly said, no, no, that's not what's going to happen. If I look at that knee or if I look at that injury or I look at that painful situation up close and, and really just enter it and appreciate it, all that's going to happen is it's going to feel worse. I'm going to feel more pain. And all this woo-woo nonsense is just a bunch of woo-woo nonsense. And that was the thought. No, I didn't want to admit that. I didn't want to go around saying, well, this is a bunch of woo-woo nonsense. I didn't want to offend people or whatever. But that's what was going on in my mind. And that's what I had to let go of. I just had to let go of that thing. But it's, as I say that right now, it sounds so easy to say, well, all I had to do was just let go of it. At the time, that was seemed impossible. Letting go of that was like, you know, trying to push a tractor with my bare hands. It just wasn't going to happen. <laughs> right. So I was just writing down some notes so I don't forget about it. But, um, <laughs> but that's the thing. You know, you think that, by accepting it, you're going to prolong it. But no, you're not because it just no. wants to be seen. It's just energy that wants to be seen. So when you see it, it's like, oh, she saw me? Okay, I don't have to try so hard to make her see me anymore, mm-hmm. right? Whatever that energy is, whatever it's representing for you. So accepting it allows it to leave. And that's the whole thing with mindfulness. You know, you're, you're not running away from it. You're looking at it. Mm-hmm. Looking at it head on, seeing it. Because it just wants to be seen. So, like, I know even with, like, with the energy healing, the gate modality that I do, that the energy just wants to be seen. When we look at it, accept it, love it, it just goes. Mm -hmm. It might show up as this pain in my head or this palpitations in my heart or, oh, some real itchy. Like, you know, resistance will show up in the body through the modality that I use. And then uh, we look at it, do Mm -hmm. a clearing for it, accept it, love it, it's gone. Here in one second, gone the next. Mm-hmm. It seems magical, but it, well, I guess it is magical. But really, basically, we're just looking at it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there is like, magic is is probably the best definition of magic I ever heard is along the lines of magic is science that we don't yet understand. You know, so if you look at it that way, then yeah, I guess it is magic because a lot of the stuff we haven't figured out scientifically what it is, but we have figured it out on what a soul level, or I'm not sure how to describe it, but mm-hmm. on a spiritual level. Yeah, on an energetic level. Energetic yeah. level, yeah. It's like, uh, so the difference between you and you and me is that you like to understand what happened, and I'm like, I don't care. Yeah, I know. You and, and, and David Barkey and some of the others who have been co-hosts, you, know, you look at me like cross-eyed, like, what the heck's wrong with you? <laughs> no, 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 but that's different ways of processing stuff, you know? Yeah. Like, my, I live with my husband and my son. They love to know how things work. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they, you know they, they're very much... They're very spiritual, but they mm-hmm. also like it, it. It lights them up to understand the science behind it, which is probably the same for you, right? And yeah, for me, I'm like, listen, there's too much information. I'll just go with how I feel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 
and, and well, there is too much information and it becomes too much to process. I think for me and probably for your husband and for your son, I can't say a hundred percent for sure, but most likely, uh, I think it's more just if I can understand how the process works, you know, how the whole thing fits together, then it's easier for me to accept that it's actually true, that it really is there. It's that because for me, that acceptance, especially early on, was it, it seemed impossible. There, there didn't seem to be any way early on that I could accept a lot of this stuff because it seemed like nonsense. It was woo-woo. It was crazy. Right. You know? you're, you're probably at the level now where you appreciate both ways. Because I know my, my, my husband and my son, they just get it. Like my son, mm -hmm. he's got some major abilities. Um, but he also likes to understand how things work. I mean, they like to build things. You know, they're into, mm -hmm. they're into that kind of stuff. Um, so they have the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. But I think also you may start by, well, look at people like Greg Braden and Bruce Lipton, um, you know, th that really explain the science behind all of this. Right. They love explaining the science. They don't need they, it. Well, they, they live for it. They don't need it, but they mm -hmm. love explaining it, right? Oh, yeah. It lights them up and it helps so many people mm -hmm. because some people need to know it and some people don't. Right. Yeah. And that's what's so cool. There, There is no one way to get it, to understand it. Yep. No, there's no right way. Find your own way. And that's been, that one was easy for me. I have to admit that one particular thought that there's no right way, that there's no one way. I believe that long before I heard about law of attraction, long before I, I believed in any of this stuff, long before I even entertained it, before my sister even started telling me about this stuff and I kept shaking my head thinking that she was insane. Right. Long right. before that, I believe that we're just whatever the, the the truth was about how the universe is organized and how we all came about and what you know the answers to the ultimate questions and so forth. Whatever that was, I knew that it was not through one path. It had to be through billions of paths. Right. Had to. Be. Right. Yeah. For me too. Like when I was, I'm like, who's this? Why does people think this is the only planet? That has life. Why could, how could this be the only planet with life? <laughs> Mathematically, it'd be crazy. <laughs> how could it be? Like, why, what, why only here, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, that, that would be pretty wild. But no, I, I think there's, there's life all over the place. I, well, actually, we do know. I mean, scientists, astrophysicists, and so forth, astronomers are already discovering what they call exoplanets, planets in other solar systems. And they've been able to identify through their telescopes, through you know, electron telescopes. They've been able to identify signatures of things that indicate, yeah, there's there could be life going on there. They, they can't say that for sure yet, but there, there are a lot of indications out there. And of yeah. course there must be. Yeah. I mean, and we're, more than just like amoebas, you know, we're talking like people, like beings. Oh, most likely. Yeah. I mean, yeah. They, they aren't necessarily seeing that much through their electron microscopes, but but nevertheless, that's where it's all pointing to eventually. Yeah. It'll, it'll open up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, there's another indicator that we have that it is going to open up and that it is opening up. Look at the um, movies that have been done, particularly over, say, the last 50 years or so. Look how many of them have been explorations in the mind of what's in outer space. Imagining what are, are there aliens? What are they like? You know, are they hostile? Are they friendly? Where do they live? How do they live? You know, what what do they do? What you know, what what kind of uh, basic building blocks are they made from? I and mean, there's just there are tons of science fiction writers who write that kind of thing. God. There's real life experience. You know, you look up Corey Good, look up David Wilcock, um, just to name a few of them mm -hmm. that that will share their experience. Oh, did you hear that? Yeah, I did. What is that? The microphone. Yeah, I did. What is that? The microphone's going. Oh, we're getting a, a little echo going. There's the beings. They're, they're coming in. They're like, yeah, we're here. Listen to us. We're talking to your phone. We haven't had that energetic. We haven't had that energetic. Wow, that's really overcome power wow, now. that's really overcome power now. <laughs> yeah. So that's fun. Welcome. Yes. <laughs> Welcome. I'm going to put the headphones on just to calm <laughs> things down. Just to calm things down. <laughs> yes, we exist. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people channeling all sorts of beings. I guess. Dimensions. I guess. Oh, not I guess. Oh, yes, it's happening. Yeah, well, all right, yes. Yeah, well, all right, yes. <laughs> you can find a lot of people on uh, YouTube. Yeah. Of course, my, my wire's all tangled up here. My wire's all tangled up here. But I'm just trying to stop. Uh, trying to stop. Are you still hearing an echo? I'm hearing an echo. Uh, it's a, not as bad as it was. Okay. Well, hopefully this will help. Okay. Can't okay. even though I look nice so little little wire all over the place. That's okay. We only have a few minutes left. That's okay. We only have a few minutes left. But we haven't had that in quite but some time. We haven't had that in quite some time. 
Yeah, that was fun. You know? It's yeah. been a long time since it's we had that. It's been a long time since we had that. <laughs> <laughs> there was one point there where it was going to take over the show over here. Hey, should I get one more card? I had another. I pulled another deck out here from. Yeah, we got we got about four minutes. Sure. We got about four minutes. Sure. Okay, the answer is simple with Sonia Choquette. That's the okay. book I'm going to choose from. And let's see what we get. Let's see. Well, just, whatever comes up in this card, we'll just maybe take it as uh, what to look look for in this upcoming week. So that's what we're asking. We're just asking Spirit to give us a okay. message. Okay. Um, something to um, take us into this next week. Let's do it that way. Mm -hmm. uh, let me move this stuff out of the way. I've got so many things on my desk. I can't. Uh, okay. And, and you know, I actually don't remember too much what this deck is about to know what kind of card could come up. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be fun. It'll be a surprise. It'll be a surprise. We'll see. Tell the truth. Ah. Tell ah. the truth. So you know what? I'm not even going to read the card because this is like we're just tapping on some so-called concepts, right? But maybe we are telling the truth right now about uh -oh. how, you uh -oh. know, I mean, we are multidimensional beings, right? Mm -hmm. And that there are, you know, many other universes, many other life life out there, but that we all have some kind of a connection to each other because the truth of our being is that we are love and that love is that energy that heals all things, right? Makes sense, sure. Um, sense. And that's that's been underlying of everything we were talking about today. So maybe tell the truth is also just to allow yourself to be who you are, like to actually look at yourself and what is it that you want? You know, how do you want to carry yourself throughout the rest of your life, right? Tell the truth to yourself of what, what do you really desire. Tell the truth to yourself that you have the ability to do and create anything that you want. Just get out of your way and join into what I believe is true, that we have these guides and angels, this spirit outside of us that uh, will guide us and help us and show us and put things in our path so that we can really step into what we came here to do. Ooh, yeah, we can go on and on and on about this tell the truth card. Absolutely. Well, I'll add to it one idea. The idea of the idea speaking of your own truth. Your own truth. I mean, people often talk yeah, about speaking their, their truth, truth to others. To others. But this is speaking your truth to yourself. Yourself. Yeah. And like allowing, allowing yourself to believe it. Allowing yourself to be who you are. Like to, to stop dropping all the things other people put on you that said, no, you are blah, 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 and you believe it, and you go and do that. But then you're like 40 years old, and you're like, I'm not that. Why did I want, Why did I go to school and do that? I want to do this. <laughs> like that's what's happening. Yep. That's cool. That's very good stuff. Very good stuff. Should I read, well, the, should well, I read what they intended with the card or what? Should yeah, we, we, yeah. Got, we got about a half a minute left, but, you know, okay. share a little bit. Of it. Share a little bit. Of it. So, it, it, so it says, uh, the answer is simple, tell the truth. Your ego doesn't feel safe, so it hides the truth, both from the world and you. This makes life extremely complicated and exhausting, as you know. <laughs> you can't feel authentic unless you interpret, the, uh, unless you interpret, I'm sorry, interrupt. I need my glasses, but I'm going to go without them. You can't feel authentic unless you interrupt the ego and let your spirit take over. Mm. Right? That's what we were just talking about. Start by being honest with yourself. Ask the question, if I weren't afraid, I would, and then fill in the blank. What would you do mm. if you weren't afraid, right? Mm. Uh, do this several times and your truth will come tumbling forth. Your spirit is always happy to reveal it. You must simply want to hear it and know it. Just ask, you know, just ask. Ask your higher self, show me what is it that I intended to do here in this lifetime. Um, your truth is found just behind your fears. The truth will be revealed as love, right? Mm -hmm. It's not right. fear, right. it's love. Um, <clears throat> once you acknowledge the truth of your spirit, you'll be free to create it. Until you do, however, your ego will keep you going in circles. <laughs> really want the truth of your spirit to come forward. With it will come the power and the inspiration to live it. So to be your truth. Yes. Good. I like that. Perfect. Like that. That's a great way to end the show. So yeah. thank you for pulling that card. Well, all those cards really fit together this week. 
Yeah, they nice. sure did. So thank you very much. Thank you to our live stream listeners and to our podcast listeners as well. And we will see you all next time. You're on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.